in the things you do and say, living lives that lead others away from sin. Having been deeply rooted in him, and now being continually built up, say continually. I like that. All the time, amen? amen. 24 7, seven days a week, 350, I mean, 365. I don't want to short you none, amen? 365 days a year, continually. God is good, amen? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Continually built up in Him and becoming increasingly more established in your faith. Just as you were taught and overflowing in it with gratitude. God is good, amen? amen. God is good, and we need my gift this morning with our attitude of gratitude. And be thankful. Can't be over here, we gotta be where we're going. God is good, amen. amen. It's good. Lift your hands to Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, we thank you, we give you the honor what you're going to do. God, I just thank you for what you're doing all day. I ask you that your words will go forth with power that, that you will confirm the gospel with signs and wonders and diverse miracles. In Jesus' name. Just do what you said you would do in your word. And it will be more than sufficient. So Father, not me but you. And I ask you to glorify yourself. In Jesus' name. Father, glorify yourself in the name of Jesus. And everyone say it. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. He is good. He is good. Jesus made a way. Amen. Amen. Jesus made a way. And you know something? God said that it's your time to be established in Jesus. He made a way. He made a way. How many of you have? It seems like things just ain't right, it's off, like you just can't get through. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Something's holding you back. God said, I've already made a way. Amen. I've made a way for you. I've made a way. I've got what you need. I've got what ails you. I've made a way. I've already made provision for you. But God said it's time he wants us to be established in him. Rooted in Him, Amen. Amen. You know something? If you, we're going to look a few places this morning. But if you, if you uh, just you can just bear with me, and I'll give you some scripture. You can take it home and you can read it. <coughs> How many know about Paul or Saul? Before his name was changed. Saul thought he knew the truth. Saul was had zeal concerning what he knew. What he thought that he knew. Saul persecuted the church. He persecuted the church with great zeal. In other words, he was consumed with persecuting the church and wiping out all Christians. He was consumed in it. How many times in your life were you, in, in your life in the past, now you may be all right now, you may be locked in now and you don't have any messed up thinking. Praise God. You're sanctified, folks, and Holy Ghost feel. Praise God. Amen. But you know something? There's a time in your past where you found out what you did and you thought that was right and it wasn't right. You might know what I'm talking about. Amen. So the thing about it, once you was enlightened, once you received the truth, you should have changed, which I know you did because you saved, thank God, who don't go. And you love Jesus. And you, you should have changed. That, that change when you came to the realization of the truth, it changed. But you know something? You would have swore and come hell or high water, you would have stick in that way that you thought that was right. That's right. I'm not going to change. My mama didn't like it. My grandmama didn't like this. That's the way that it is. It's not going to change. That's the right way to do it. And I'm not going to change. 
It takes an uh, experience with God to change that. It takes an experience with God to totally break that down and totally build up the way he wants you to be built up. So you think this is why I am established in the faith. Are you really? You got to examine your own soul salvation. Amen. You got to examine where you are when it lines up to Jesus, not when it lines up to the man that's in the mirror. If you look at the man in the mirror, you may have been, may be having a good hair day, but you're just rotting on the inside. You know, like Beverly said, man, we got to stop looking at what's on the outside and look at what's on the inside. That's not only with other people, that's with ourselves. We got to examine ourselves to see if we line up with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we line up with the good news, if we line up with the promises that God had for us. Everybody wants to be blessed, right? Ain't nobody else want to be blessed. That baby want to be blessed. Say, yeah, I want to be blessed. Lord, she's happy, she's happy. Praise God, glory to God. Amen. I want to be blessed. You know something? You should be happy too. You should have that same expectation, God. You want to be. You want to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed. There ain't no way that nothing can stop me from being blessed. Well, the only thing that stops you is you, because Amen. nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. See, it doesn't separate you. You separate yourself. God's love is all around us. God's provision is all around us. And his establishment is all around us. And he wants us to be rooted and grounded. And like it says in, in, in Colossians, he wants that to be a continual thing. Not just once, once, a, once a week. Not just twice a week. Well, I got to be get ready for Sunday, so I'm working on it Saturday. Man, you know something? I got problems. I don't know about you, but I got problems. All day, every day. And I need God to come in, and I need God to move, and I need God to have his way. And I need a, a change to take place in my life. You know something, if you're bitter, you know something, bitterness is a killer. Bitterness is cancer. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. You got to let the brokenness go. You can't fix it. You can't handle it. Nothing you can do. It's just going to choke you out. It's going to choke you out. Your healing is today. Your deliverance is today. It's time for you to be established in the right thing. We'll get established in the wrong thing. Mama did it way this way. I'm going to do it this way. You know something? That's called a recipe book. My uncle's got my daddy's recipe book. And he can make them, them, them little, like I was telling you, praying God, Amen. I'm, I'm just breathing. I'm not hungry right now. But he can make them little rolls that are real sweet and yeast rolls. He can make them just like Nanny did. Because he got the book he's been practicing. Couldn't nobody else make it. But he got the book. We know something sometimes we get a hold of the wrong book. And we get consumed with the wrong book. And God says today is your day to get the right book. Today is your day to get for me to Turn some stuff around today is the day. Saul thought he had the right book. And he was killing Christians left and right. When they stoned Stephen, it said that they laid the clothes and they laid the garment down at Saul's feet. And they were stoning Stephen. And Stephen said, I got the right book. And he said, Father, forgive him. Forgive him. As they're stoning him, as they're stoning him, throwing stones and rocks and stuff at him, trying to kill him, but he just won't die. He just wouldn't die. He just wouldn't die until he just wouldn't die until Jesus stood up and until he came, he reached down and picked him up and until he said, Father, forgive him. Then it says, man, that's some kind of love right there. That's some kind of love. That's some kind of love. That he fought it just he fought it all the way to the end of their throwing stones. Anybody been to rock fight when you was a kid? We, we had gravel in our, in, in our neighborhood, and uh, we would get rocks, and we would throw them at one another. We would just have rocks. We would just throw them. We would be throwing rocks, you know, hitting them and stuff. We would, that's what we did. We would do a whole lot of stuff, but that was one thing. We had a rock fight. And we had somebody would, would get one of the big rocks. So you, you're supposed to, that's cheating. You're supposed to get them little bitty rocks. But somebody would cheat, get them big rocks, and they get them tired. You just, ah! 
You know what I'm saying? They, they, do, they do the, the, the thing right there. You know what I'm talking about. Kids, when you got a whooping, it might, I ain't gonna ask you. I ain't gonna ask you. But you know, when we would get a whooping, and they'd hit you and they'd be smacking you with that switch, or that belt, or hot wheel track, extension cord, that's off limits nowadays. <laughs> you just do it, you take care of your home, crazy. That's all I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> But they hit you, man. They hit you on your behind and stuff like that. They hit you on your leg. But sometimes they mess up and hit you on your back. And you get that. Ah! <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the see, thing about it is that, is that they was doing Steve in that way. And they was trying to kill him and throwing rocks at him and hit him in the head and everything. But he wouldn't let go. And he looked and he saw. He saw past the hatred. He saw past the disgust. He saw past that blind rage. He saw past that, and he looked into the heart of man, and he saw that person that was broken. And he said, I got to hold on just a little longer. And he lifted his up voice, and he lifted his eyes to God, and he said, Father, An expression of love. Love is stronger than anything in the world. Father, forgive them. You know something? We need to take that from, from Stephen this morning. Because you've been abused and you've been beaten and you've been broken and you've been hurt. And you've been lied upon mistreated. But you know something? It's time to say to rise up with everything that you got with your last breath and say, Father, forgive me. I release it. I release it. I'll let it go. See, when you release it, Jesus stands up. When you release it, Jesus stands up and says, Paul was, Saul was just doing what he blindly thought that was right. He did it, and he did it, and he did it, and he did it, and he did it. And he did it. No big thing. And he had a great reputation. But all of a sudden, he came up against mercy and grace. He came up against the same one that, that answered Stephen's prayer and forgave him because Stephen was praying not only for those that were stoning him, but he was praying for Paul, Father. Forgiving. Forgiving for all that he's done. Forgiving for his past. Forgiving. Jesus said, I'm answering that prayer today. I'm answering that prayer. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he answered that prayer for me. What about you? He answered that prayer, and then all of a sudden, mercy and grace met Saul. Mercy and grace met hate. Mercy and grace met depression. Mercy and grace met lies and cheating. Mercy and grace met that person. Met those things. And something to the place. Jesus said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That's what Jesus said. He said, who is the Lord? He knew. The devil knows Jesus. Amen. Amen. Even in your life, you need to ask the question. It, it, it is, Jesus has come to you, and he's come to you, and he's come to you, and he's come to you, and he has come to you, and he asked you to release it, but you won't release it. You need to listen to me, please. God, that's why I told him I could not know that that's I'm glad I lost it. Well, I'm glad God put it away. So let you need to listen to what God is saying to you right now. The power and the love of God is here in this place. It's here to change your life. God has dealt with you and dealt with you and dealt with you and said, hey, 
I want you to release it. But you want to release it. Today's your kick against the prick day. It's hard to kick against the prick. How many of you know that God loves you very well? How many of you feel the love of Jesus? Hard to kick against the prick when you feel the love of Jesus, ain't it? Hard to kick against the prick. Well, they just nasty, but Jesus said, I love you. But I can't stand them. Where that love breaks you down, and you go, oh, 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 oh. Y'all seen Bugs Bunny. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That big old dumb vulture, the little big And he and they hug on him and everything, and, and, and kill that's the name. Kill that little kill that. But you know, some killer couldn't kill nothing. But mama loved him. He's going, oh, oh, oh. See, love will break you down. You know something? Those of you that they got a boo, raise don't raise your hand, but you don't come. You got your boo, you got your boo, and you know something, and your boo love on you, and you like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you hug and your wife love on you, and things that you wouldn't do, you do because they don't love gave you a little bit of love. You know, okay, what do we do? <laughs> Shoot. <clears throat> I know. I was like, I ain't going. I ain't. I ain't going. Jesus, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing all that stuff. I'm not going to hook that refrigerator up. No. I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I ain't going to do it. And then she, and I'm off and she go, leave me to go to work. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> she, you don't want me to go up to the refrigerator? Mm -hmm. My day. I ain't doing it. You go down there, you go relax, I'm not going to do it. Love you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know you ain't doing it. <laughs> they go have nerve enough to send a text with an artist, some smiley face, <laughs> stuff like that. Love you. Okay. <laughs> I'm drilling holes in the floor. <laughs> Drilling through the joints. <laughs> Smell like half go catch your own pop. <laughs> Why? Because the love of Almighty God, because of love. How much more is the love of God? Amen? See, the thing we got to understand something. We got to understand something when it's time to release it and let it go. <coughs> Jesus moved on Paul when he moved on him and moved on him and he changed his name and life was changed. Saul to Paul. Amen? Amen? Why? Because mercy, grace, and the love of Almighty God. God made the way. God used Stephen to make the way. God made the way. Amen? <coughs> but you know something? If you look at the gospel, you see something and, and, and this is totally intriguing to me. It says that Jesus was in the place and the disciples were in the place and they were coming to get Jesus and Malchus, one of the Pharisee servants, was with him. And the word of God says that they came <coughs> out to Malchus. Malchus was sold out to his master. He was sold out to the one that was over him. He blindly followed the one. You know something? We'll blindly follow tradition. We'll blindly follow this or that. We'll blindly follow our mind, our lust. We'll blindly follow uh, hurts or whatever. We'll blindly follow that like a lemon that goes over the cliff. We'll blindly follow. This is the way that we do it. This is the way that we do it. You know, somebody was at, at work in a um, little mother, and uh, she's from overseas. I don't, I don't know what national, but I was going through I'm her boss. And she said, you go first. And I said, uh-uh, no, 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 ma'am. No, ma you go first. She said, no. In my culture, you go first. I said, ma'am. I said, the way I thought of women are highly favored by God. 
women are to be loved and nurtured and taken care of. And I said, man, it'd be honored for me if you go first. And she smiled just as big. And she went through. And she said, you boss. I said, no, ma'am. He the boss. But if, if you would do this, <coughs> I came. I, I thought to myself, my daddy get up out of the grave and whoop me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She went through, and you know something? I didn't pay no attention to it. But somebody came and said, I want to thank you. I said, what are you talking about? She said, for you taking care of that mother. For you taking care of that mother. I said, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything. But you know something? She needed something that day. She needed something. She needed to know evidently that she was special. And She's highly favored with God. And she is special. Women, you're special with God. Men, you're special with God. And we need to treat one another that way. <coughs> Amen? Amen? That's the way we need to be treated. That's the way we need to be treated. But Malchus, he was, he was totally and it just engulfed in the tradition, engulfed in the religious thing, engulfed in it, and he went out there along with the Romans, along with Judas, and he went out there, and he was a representative, and it says, in the heat of the battle, Peter, God bless him, Peter pulled the sword and cut off Malchus's ear in a rage. Malchus was already blinded. Now he was deaf. He was, he was messed up. He was more, he was wounded to me. And back in the day, he was mortally wounded because there was no any no antibiotics, none of that stuff. But you know something? Even in that state, even in the heat of the battle, you know, it's a confirmation of what the members said this morning. We got to take our time when it comes to Jesus. We got to take our time when dealing with folks and dealing with our family. We need to take our time and slow down a bit. Jesus slowed down. Jesus got into his own. And when all hell's breaking the loose, Jesus is telling them, and he reached down, and he got the ear, and it says, and he put it back on the mouth. You know, and he put it on there so he could hear everything clear. Jesus received that. Everything clear. I could see him. He looked. He was shocked. He was stunned. He didn't want to go nowhere. Jesus was the one that made the way. <coughs> so what is it? What way do you need made today? What is it that you need in your life today? What is it that you need your God to do? If you are broken, he's a way maker. If you have bills that need to be paid, he's a bill payer. Whatever it is in, in your life, if you've been going down the road of tradition, it can stop today because you know something? He's made a way for you. Yes. And it's your time to be established. Rooted and grounded in the gospel. Rooted and grounded in Jesus. Rooted and grounded in his ways. It's time, your time today. Like Yvonne said, step out over here and step into Jesus. Can't nobody transplant a tree. Oh man, well, men can't. Yeah, but men can't tell the tree, tree get up, and the tree jump about it, whoop, jump out, and then take the little roots over, and then be planted someplace else. Jesus can do that. Amen? Amen. So God wants to transplant you today. He wants you to be established in the gospel. Are you tired of being sick and tired? Amen. Are you tired of just going through, just barely making it? How many tired of that mess? You know something? If you're tired of it, today's your day to be untired. To be untired. And say, okay, God, you made a way. Hallelujah. God's going to establish you today. If you want to be established, you're going to establish rooted and grounded, and like the gospel says, like the, the good news, because the word of God is good news. Like I said in Colossians, you are going to be continually 
365 days a year. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not 52, 56. 365 days a year. You're going to be continually strengthened by the love and the provision of Almighty God. How many can use this? Amen. Amen. And you're going to be able to, I, I lay hands on my children. I want to feed my children the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to feed them. If you have a need, if you need to step out of where you is and step into where God wants you to be. God, I know life is better than this. You got more and more for me than this. I know you do. I know you do. And I want you to be a person. Please, right, man? Amen. So I can be a Jesus pleaser. Yes. I know you got more than this. Well, if you know it, why don't you step out? Don't punk out. Step out. Step into it. All right, then. I'm ready for it. Stepping out of old family stuff. Stepping out of this. Stepping out of messy. Ain't nothing but worse than a messy person. Amen? Amen. Amen. I stepped out of that mess. That's just, I ain't gonna about nobody to play with size. Messy, messy, messy. Tired of mess. Are you tired of this? Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I receive 
I receive my prosperity. My prosperity. I receive. I receive my health. My health for everything. For everything in my life. In my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I thank you. When our backs were against the wall, I looked as if it was over. Jesus, I was standing here.